as he was saying previously, and we never got um, the opportunity to develop it, um, but we can say it right here, when you look at the two Bibles, now we had uh, read His Majesty's Bible forward, the forward from 1961, um, from July 23rd. Here it goes right here. It's in, it's in our Rastafari preliminary notes on the H.I.M. Haile Selassie First and Hard Bible, an introduction to the Book of the Seven Seals in 1954 A.M., Ameta Meheret, A Year of Mercy, which is converted from the Ethiopian uh, Kenak Utat Ed into the Western calendar to 1961 A.D. or the Emperor's Bible. And this special Jubilee Year edition, we touched on some of the basics, some of the background to put His Majesty's Bible translation into context as well as into the prophetic revelation of Christ in His kingly character. So is this book, if one wants to learn a little bit more about it, and like we say, it's a preliminary note. So we, had, we had a lot of um, notes and a lot to share on this particular subject matter of His Majesty's Bible, all praise due to the King of Kings in the name of Christ for that. However, what we wanted to do was to lay a basic foundation, to build on a basic foundation. And so we wanted to do from the last uh, vid, just carrying on from the last video, we're touching on the Amharic Bible Wars. Now we call it an Amharic Bible Wars, and that's exactly what it is, as well as the you know, every war, if they say war, this is the Prophet Muhammad, or I believe it was him, or in one of his hadiths, someone said about war is like deception. And this is like an old kind of saying that warfare is usually by deception. And what we're learning more and more in this ministry of His Majesty as we seek to also to serve our brothers and sisters with that which the Almighty has freely given us the half of the story concerning the King of Kings and the knowledge concerning some of the basics that we as Rastafari and as faithful Ethiopians, as righteous Africans, and as um, righteous Gentiles, too, need to know. This is, this is the truth for all, that to preach the gospel, the good news, to all creatures, to all creatures, but to hopefully to make disciples, you understand, out of those many or few who are chosen or who choose to seek such. And this is why we present and we present again. You see, these are two Bibles. One of these is the authentic Amharic Bible, and another, the other is the fake, pretender, is the pretender. The real Bible, this one in my right hand, is the Book of the Seven Seals, the Met of Caduce of Negus and Negus. The Bible of His Imperial Majesty. We discussed in um, one of the previous uh, portions of this, um, His Majesty's, um, his uh, mechanism or the, the preface to his Bible. And now in the international version that was published in the year after, and now first let's get some dates up here. Let's continue what we have up here, and perhaps this will make the point a little bit clearer. So we have 19, in the English, 1961, right, A.D., right? This is His Majesty's Bible. And now over here, the Revised Amharic Bible, over here we have the Pope's Bible, or 1980. Now, we had, we had demonstrated previously how you can tell when you look at the two, the two books, and with 1980 it says it right up on the title page says 1980 in the Arabic or Hindu letters or numbers as they call them. And um, in the international, let's, let's first touch on this. This is what it looks like, published by our brother uh, Seymour McLean. He's the only other brother I know that has really, you know, come out from years ago speaking about His Majesty's Bible. And that's brother um, Seymour McLean one of our brethren in the diaspora in the United Kingdom or out of England, um, if, he, if he's still there or not. But we see some recent work they had on the Jubilee year, that this is a Jubilee year because it's actually, it's actually 50 years since His Majesty um, published and proclaimed his, 
his his uh, Bible of the King of Kings, the authorized, revised, Amharic Bible. Now, if you know Torah, you know that when the Beit Israel would 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 have kings, that it was one of the 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 laws for kings, the divine laws for kings, to get the scriptures from the priests and to put forward. A, a a a copy to copy out the scriptures for his his own use in other words to make a publication or and a printing of the scriptures to seek the scriptures to seek the word of God and this is what's so very interesting concerning Kadamawi Haile Selassie or Haile Selassie the first is that this is exactly what he did so if we look at his imperial majesty Kadamawi Haile Selassie our godfather and king of kings if we look at him from the 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 Torah from the Torah, the Old Testament and the whole Davidic Davidic kingship, as well as from the Torah prescriptions concerning kings, what we find is that he faithfully fulfilled those precepts. And then when we say, well, other kings must have done this, and other ones, we find very few and very far between. And the area of scripts that we're talking about. Let's just get this right here. This is uh, uh, concerning a king. It's in chapter Deuteronomy chapter uh, 17. Concerning a king, it says, And when thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God, Yahweh Eloheinu, giveth thee, and shall possess it, and shall dwell therein, and shall say, I will set a king over me like as all the nations that are around, that are about me, thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee. This is when the people now are established in the land, in the promised land, and they now chose to have a king, a, a main, you know, set up a government. You know what I mean? Just like we have governments today that talk about democracy or would like to be like the West or human rights or on those levels. They want to either modernize and, and have a more so-called... Um, based on what they say, a more fair, just government to serve the interests of the people. And so when in ancient times and in previous times, this was fulfilled through having that king, because the king is that first servant of state according to the true precepts of king. You know, you hear a lot about divine right of kings, so forth and so on, and, and how the Europeans had democracy and revolutions and socialism and this and that. Well, you have to remember that there was a divine right of kings in Europe, but that was through the black nobility. After the black nobility were, were either assimilated or exterminated, liquidated, or, you know, gradually faded out as it were, but through a variety of different different nobility were in different European lands. That's why we find, you know, the, the presence of black African people and links and connections with a lot of um, European history. And and it surprises many of us because we're like, we didn't even know so-called black folks were in Europe. But now we really learn about the black nobility, especially, say, in England, for example. It, it starts to make sense you know, the big picture, the prophetic picture even, and little bits and pieces that we've heard here and there. But here, when the people, when the Beta Israel would set, uh, or would seek to have a king like the other nations, the Goyim or the Gentiles, the word says that thou shalt in any wise set him king, Nigus or, or, or Melech, over thee, whom Yahweh Eloheinu shall choose. One from amongst thy brethren shalt thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a king over thee which is not thy brother. So this is saying to the Beit Israel that we cannot have no foreign or foreign king. We can't ha have it. This is why what, what happened to um, our brother Yeshua, Yehoshua, Adonenu, Gitachin Yesus Christus, our black Lord and Savior, is so very indicative of the nigger, the Ethiopian, the black man's um, um, condition. You understand his 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 um, rebelliousness against God, against against the God source. In other words, his rebelliousness against himself. Even you understand when you really understand it, when you look at the fact that even Pontius Pilate said concerning Adonai Yeshua, he said that, um, "Do you want me to to like?" 
crucify your king. And, and what did the, the, the careless niggas, the lost sheep say even then? They said, we have no king but uh, Asar, you know, but, but, but Caesar, but Kaiser. We have no king but Caesar. This is what they said. So they were willing to set up a Ferenc, a foreign king, just like Negroes who will be worshiping the so-called white, blonde hair, blue-eyed Jesus and, 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 and holy family. You understand? It's 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 the same sort of it's the same sort of um, worshiping the image of the beast. In other words, you know, and and lack of recognition, lack or lack of knowledge of self. You understand? From from a divine, from our divine heritage. But now here's a link with Ethiopia now, and the kingship in Ethiopia, which is the Vedic. You see, the kingship in Ethiopia is the Vedic. That's the Judah or the Yehuda link. And us as a diaspora and even the Afro-American, the Judahites and the Binyamites and the, and the Levites and, and the other tribes that are scattered over here, but those main four tribes. See, there's, there's four main tribes which are scattered over here. And, and the so-called Negro or the Afro-American is that Judahite, that explains then when you start to look at the manifestation of the links of Ethiopia and even a divine word that says, aren't you like the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O Beta Israel? Now, even before really being conscious of Ethiopia, many Israelites, even today a lot of black Israelites, know that they're Israel. We, we see it in, in the scripture, we see it in the signs, we know it in our history, and we find other evidences that prove that. But it's the Ethiopia link that's that, that that's that other aspect of 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 the of the mystery of God of of the mystery of God and what we're seeing is through Rastafari revelation we can make that link you understand know between Judah remember it says that in Judah or Yehuda is God known is Ha Elohim known is the true God known but His name is greater than Israel because of a certain relationship that the Almighty made when he made that covenant with the house of David. And it said that David would always have a man to sit on that throne until the consummation of things. And now we see that Ketamawi Haile Selassie, or Haile Selassie I, is the last king of kings of Ethiopia, the first and the last. And they say, well, well he's dead, he died, but we say, behold, he lived. And so we see the prophecy and the revelation revealing itself. So now here's the link with the kingship, is that since it says, aren't you like the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? So we blacks in the Western Hemisphere, the so-called um, African Holocaust, that Ethiopian Hebrew diaspora, we recognize that link now with Ethiopia, even from the divine word, where the Almighty is saying and comparing the Beta Israel, the children of the Beta Israel, whom we are, with the children of the Ethiopians. So we see there's a certain divine heritage, a divine heritage link. Now, here with kingship, it says, it says, but, verse 16 of Deuteronomy chapter 17, but he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt to the end that, that he should multiply horses. For as much as Yahweh hath said to you, ye shall henceforth return no more that way. That they're going to return to a Egypt. They're going to go down to Egypt, but not that way, not by horses or not through business kind of links in that, in that sense. They'll return as the Ethiopians have even returned to this spiritual Egypt or D.C., D.C. is the epitome of that fulfillment of spiritual Egypt. And that's, and that's the heart, we can say, of little Ethiopia or little Ethiopia. But let's just go forward. So it says, neither shall he multiply wives to himself. So his majesty, people say, well, he had certain cars or so forth and so on. Well, all these were gifts. You understand? These, these were gifts. The majority of all of them had said he's been so forth and so on. And it was proven. It was proven that. Now, there's reason, so forth, and so on behind all that. But these were gifts. He didn't multiply horses or send his people. Now, now the, the careless Ethiopians come, and they want to get a lot of cars, and they want to come down into Egypt. You understand where we have been, this spiritual, this spiritual Egypt. But it says, 
neither shall he multiply wives himself. One of the characteristics that even many of the sister in and brethren and others, we reason about the fact that his majesty's fidelity in, in the bonds of, 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 of the marriage, you understand, that fidelity, that love, and we look at Empress Menon, Kedemawit, uh, Waleta Georgis, we look at her in that special, in that motherly way, but we see in their relationship something that is special, special to us as black people, seeing an emperor, a king of kings, and an empress, a queen of queens, you understand, and to see a faithful and a loving relationship. So this is also fulfillment, what we're seeing that through his majesty we're getting a fulfillment of those Old Testament types. You see, and this is the type right here in Deuteronomy 17 concerning a king. It says, Neither shall he multiply wives to himself that his heart turn not away. So we see the opposite in, in Shlomo or in Solomon. But then the Moshiach, Yehoshua, says, A greater than Shlomo or Solomon is here. So we see that manifested in and through the person of his majesty and says, Neither that he greatly multiplied to himself silver or gold. So speaking about the characteristics that a king or truly a divine king or a king that is ruling with divine authority must have. So there's a qualification. Scripture says the qualification of the, the person, what the relationship of the person must be one of our brothers. That means one of the tribes of Israel. Therefore, there's that remnant of of the Beit Israel in Ethiopia, and that remnant of the house of David in the house of the king of kings, in Kedemawi, Haile Selassie, and through him. Now, here's where it's interesting. Here's what we're talking about with the Metaf Kedus, and how what his imperial majesty did in 1961 AD with the publication of the Metaf Kedus. You understand, this is, this is the authentic, the genuine, not the 1980... Um, fake Amharic Bible. That's what it is. Pretender. Deception. You understand? It's a pretender. Deception. We find out behind that so-called Good News Bible is a 1988, is the Pope. You understand? And Mystery Babylon. That's what's behind that of the church. And we know the warfare between, we could say, the so-called apostate church of Rome and Ethiopia and, and Ethiopia and that African Zion and, and the foothold of that new Jerusalem, we, we already rec recognize that within the history. So, so this war, you understand, between the king of kings and Antichrist is not over. You understand, this is just another chapter of it. So we have to search chapter and verse to find out where, we're, where, where we are, where we're at, where we're going, how we need to behave in order to be blessed. Verse 18, it says, And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom. Now listen, Simu, Simu, listen here. It shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of this law, of this law right here. He shall write a copy of this law, it says, in a book out of that which is before the priest, the Levite. So now in the Ethiopian, we can say in the Ethiopian manifestation, the Ethiopian Hebrew manifestation, we know that we have ancient Gutas and Ethiopic scrolls and manuscripts that are well ancient and have been diligently preserved, you understand, over several, we can say over millennia, if not several millennia, you see. And so when we read in His Majesty's uh, Mechdem, His Preface, how the Gutas was consulted, you understand? Then later in the revision, how the Masoretic or the Hebrew and the Septuagint was also consulted. You understand? So what we have here is a purified, you understand, a purified text and a holy text for I and I. But this text is under, is under suppression right now. See, Babylon has gotten wise through I and I preaching, I and I ministry, and is seeking to suppress it because when he recognized, his majesty said that, in 1935, 36, you understand, when the Haile Selassie first, the first Haile Selassie Bible, you understand, had gotten completed from the Gutters, the Gutters and the Amharic, that the enemy, the enemy aggression or fascist, fascist Italy, the Pope and Mussolini, that part of prophecy, invaded while the book was still in the press. 
Why? Because they understood the significance and what his imperial majesty was fulfilling. You know, so they wanted to stop it before it grew. You know what I'm saying? They, that's what they attempted. So it says that when it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom, we find in his imperial majesty Mechdom, he says, he says, um, it was 1931, you understand, when that, when that work began on printing the Bible, this book, what, what it says concerning a king. And it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear or to reverence the Lord his God, to keep all the words of this law and these statutes and uh, these statutes to do them, to do them, that his heart be not lifted up above his brethren and that he turn not aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left so that he walk that straight path. Don't turn to you know, the, the, the so-called pressures, the extremes, that he may, to the end, that he may prolong his days in his kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel, in the midst of Israel. So we have the testimony from eyewitnesses, from people of that generation, from so-called historians, and from his majesty himself that proves that he he did this. He fulfilled this. You understand? Know he kept this. He kept this. Um, let's call it a statute. You understand? Know a law, even a commandment. He kept this this king's law. He kept the king's law. And so when we look into His Majesty's nature and see that Christ-like nature, those of us who can see, you understand, know spiritually and recognize what the word means. You know what I'm saying? And recognize the true manifestation. He said, for my part, I glory in the Bible. You know what I'm saying? How his majesty took a, a lot of, a lot of um, indignities by a lot of evil people. And even those, even after such time, who continue to spread lies and, 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 and false accusation and slander against Hala Selassie. And, and many of us have looked up a lot of these accusations and slanders and found absolutely no evidence, but found a lot much more truth about his imperial majesty that made many of us look into the scripture again and say, oh, whoa, that is the man. That, and if that is the man, then this is the time. And if that's the man and this is the time, then we are the people, Yovas. So we want to share this part right here concerning a king, how one of the king's... Um, commandments or the commandments to kings is that he would make a copy of this book, that he would make a copy of, of the scriptures that contain the law and the testimony and the covenant. And this his imperial majesty did. And those who um, may be interested in learning a little bit more about it, since there's 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 only a few documents out there that specifically go into any detail. And we hope that some of I and I works with your prayers and your support will enable I and I and others to do our studies and investigations and, and to and to present, you know, the results and the findings with our brothers and sisters. So one can get a copy of this from www lojsociety.org forward slash books. All right, my brothers and sisters, more to come. Y'all willing. Shalom.